Hi guys, it's Pete from Hybrid Solutions. This is a second in a series of videos that we're doing on the cameras we install for our customers. In a previous video, we did the five megapixel POC camera from Hikvision. You can catch that in the pop-up banner, which is here. But today, we're gonna take a look at the 3K Color View, which is a camera a step above. We'll have a look what's in the box, and then we'll get it out onto our test rig and get some day and night footage so you can see exactly what it looks like when you come to purchase. Let's get going. So we'll make a start by looking at what comes in the box. This is a brand spanking new 3K colour view that I picked up from the supplier this week. There used to be a five megapixel colour view camera, not so different to this. In fact, it's identical apart from the way that the camera looks. They've just updated the way in which the camera looks and feels. But if we take it out of this box, it's all pretty standard stuff. You get the instruction manual for it. Then inside here, you'll have the camera itself. The camera itself comes in some plastic wrapping. The connector for the camera is a PLC camera so it can be powered by the coax cable that you run. I'll touch on what PLC means in a later video but um, all you need to know for now is that the cable that runs, you run a PLC cable to the camera and that allows it to transmit the video feed and power the camera all in one cable. It saves you having to run a traditional shotgun type cable where you'd plug the 12 volt into there. Other than that you get the base that comes for the camera. The original type of Hikvision cameras you would click a base off like you saw in the last video but for this one you fix this base to the wall and then the camera sits on and clicks into place and locks into this base. Other things you get in the box are the plugs and screws. Now I would recommend chucking these away. They strip really really easily and you can't put them in with an impact driver because you just round them off and it'll take you forever to do five or six cameras of these with a, an actual screwdriver so just get yourself some decent red plugs and screws to fix this camera to the wall. The final thing that comes in the box is the drill template. I touched on the drill template in the last video. I prefer to use a marksman type tool to mark the wall or a sharpie if you can. But the drill template is handy if you, if you find yourself in a sticky situation where you need it. The idea behind it is that you just peel off the drill template, stick it to the wall and it identifies where you need to drill and screw the camera to the wall. It's Important to note, if you're bringing the cables in from behind, you need to make a small insert in where the A circle is in the center of the drill template so that you can feed the cables in from behind and it will sit nicely over the top of the wall. If you are fixing this camera to brick wall or if you need to just space it off the wall ever so slightly, I would recommend using a TR13 base. On the official Hikvision spec sheet, you shouldn't use this base, you should use the universal base. I think it's awful. I think it looks really, really nasty. I would recommend using a TR13 base. Even though it's not an official base to use from Hikvision, you can still get the camera to sit on that base. You just need to take off that little nip there and the camera will sit on it. It's not completely watertight, I should point out. So water could still ingress into this base. But for aesthetically, I would rather take the risk and waterproof the connectors inside this box than have a universal base that looks ugly on a customer's house. But inside the box for the base, you actually get the base itself with its neck. You can take that neck off and just have the blank over there where the neck goes so the cables can come in from behind. But it's all pretty standard stuff. You, you again get the fixtures and fittings, cheap Chineseium, chuck them away, use some red plugs and decent screws. The drill template, if you're using this camera with its with a TR13 base or any base from Hikvision you need to use the drill template for the base and not the camera so that the, the base will secure to the wall but the most important thing are that you don't lose these screws when you're taking out the uh, base out of its box these screws is what fixes the camera to the base I can't find these at any supplier I don't think they're a standard type of screw and what that means is if you lose them uh, or you drop them off a ladder you've got to find them because you can't secure the camera to the base without them. What we'll do now is I'll take the camera outside, I will fix it to our rig, we'll give it 24 hours, we'll get some day and night footage and I'll check back with you guys in the morning. So first things first, I've got to remove the camera that was outside already, the previous review we did on the 5 meg PLC and just reinstall the 3K colour view camera. Well, 
once inside I've just got to connect everything up so it's all back to how it was and our display walls back together and then it's just a case of configuring the recorder so that the resolution on the camera is set to the maximum and the record means I can grab some footage off it in the morning. <laughs> inside the secret menu for this camera and found it was actually set to 3k already in the previous video we looked at the 5 meg camera and it was set to 4 megapixels out of the box and you had to increase it to 5 megapixels but you don't have to do that on this one it's set to 3k out of the box <laughs> morning and it's a cold one out there it was about minus five when i got in the van i think my phone said it was about minus seven i've had to get up super early because i've just got a really busy january ahead of me and i need to get this content sorted so that i can get it out for this week but anyway i've exported some footage off the recorder so we've got some day and night clips of these hikvision 3k color view cameras i thought this would be a great opportunity to say if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do hit that subscribe button it really does help us build more content on this channel if you're an installer looking for a little bit more knowledge on the cameras that you install or you're just looking to purchase a kit for your domestic or commercial environment this will be a great channel for you because you can see exactly what cameras you're buying before you go ahead and purchase but anyway let's get into it let's look at the day and night footage that we've got as we always do i thought this would be a great opportunity just to quickly go over uh, the spec sheet from higvision you know the front of the spec sheet it just gives you a brief outline of what the camera is capable of doing it says that it's a uh, up to a 3k camera it's got a 40 meter white light which i'll come on to in a minute that's the inbuilt led light helps the camera see more at night and as it's pretty standard on most cameras it's water resistant ip67 so i wouldn't submerge these cameras in water but it definitely will take rain and dust the main thing to look out for on a heat vision spec sheet is on that second page where it's got all the columns of information the two main to focus on are the frame rate so the frames per second now i touched on this in the last video megapixels cell cameras frames per second is actually what makes a camera good so frames per second is how smooth an object moves through an image this gopro is set to 30 frames per second and everything should be quite fluid and quite well oiled together if you lower that frames per second down to um 20 or 18 or even 12 you'll start to see objects that are fast moving through the image jutter and stutter but we'll come on to that more when we pull up the recordings but we can see this camera will do 3K at 20 frames per second. It will also do four megapixels at 25 or 30 frames per second. And it will do 1080p, which is your two megapixel at 25 or 30 frames per second also. Other things to look out for on the spec sheet is the lens type. So this comes in a 2.8 or a 3.6 millimeter lens. What does that mean? That just means the angle of the lens. So in a 2.8 millimeter lens, this camera will do 112 degrees, which is quite a wide angle actually. So if you wanted to install this on front of your house, capturing your driveway, your garden, and what's happening on the road outside your house, a 2.8 millimeter lens is fantastic. Where you wouldn't want to use a 2.8 millimeter lens is down a narrow corridor or a ginnel that's next to your house because you just don't need that wide angle you don't need to capture more of the wall of your house or the more of the neighbor's fence line so a 3.6 will be better in that scenario because it just brings that lens inwards again and a 3.6 millimeter lens does 95 degrees the final thing to mention is the day and night mode on this camera is just listed as color and that's because this is a color view camera it doesn't use any infrared technology or any infrared light it uses a particular type of technology to capture the image and absorb as much ambient lighting around it as possible so that it can stay in a full color image it's also backed up by the white light that's built into the camera so when the light levels outside drop beneath a certain level that white light will come on it's not a motion white light because a lot of customers get confused about that so it doesn't come on and go off with movement it just comes off and goes on when the light levels around it reach a certain looks level the last thing is the basis so on the final page it gives you a schematic of the camera but it also tells you about the bases you can use so we already know about the universal junction box the other brackets include a pole bracket if you want to put it on a pole and a swan neck 
You wouldn't use a swan neck in a customer's house unless they request it. It's more for commercial environments where you want to bring the camera away from the wall or you just want the camera to stand out and look a little bit more obvious. That's the spec sheet. What we'll do now is we'll pull up the footage and we'll go over what it looks like in real time. We pulled up the day footage and there is a slight improvement from the 5 meg camera that we looked at last time. I think things are just a tiny weeny bit sharper than they are in the previous camera. There is still some granular areas, um, especially towards the sky. I mean, there's a lot of overexposure towards the white building across from our shop. That's just because the sun's hitting it. But a great use of colours. Reds look really good. Blue stand out. The writing on the bin is uh, is still identifiable. Um, you can't quite make out the reg plate of our car, but if it was parked a little bit closer in a better angle, you would be able to. It's important to know you'd never be able to make out reg plates on this particular camera from that junction. Hick Vision make particular type of AMPR cameras that would do that. If I come back to that frames per second, you can see that the cars transitioned through the image do have a little bit of a stutter to them and that is just because they are moving faster than the camera can keep up. But overall, vehicles are easily identifiable. You can make out makes and models of any of the cars that pass on that street. If we take a look at the night footage, this is where this camera starts to really come into its own. Now you can see that this was a frosty January night. Like I said, mentioned before, I think it got down to about minus seven here last night. But the image itself from the camera is fantastic. It's stayed in that full color image. I even turned off the lighting on our signage so that that wasn't giving it any boost. There is a good amount of ambient lighting from the junction from the street lights but no more than I would expect to find in a average housing estate. Obviously some are darker some aren't so I think this gives a fair representation of what this camera would perform like in most domestic environments. But like I say great use of colour again, reds really stand out, the blue on our car really stands out and even number plates if you remember from the previous video, infrared light hates number plates because the infrared light hits it and it bounces back at the camera and it blinds that part of the image. All in all, a really, really good image and a definitely a massive step up in comparison to the previous camera that we reviewed. Objects moving through the image are still of decent quality. The wagon that comes through the image in a second, you'll see you can still easily identify where, which delivery company that's from. He's probably travelling a little bit faster than he would normally during the day, but that's because there's no traffic in front of him, so he's a bit more of a blur as he goes through that. But all in all, you can still identify what it is that, that travels through that image. And I think this is a massive, massive improvement on the previous camera that we reviewed. So there we have it, our review of the 3K colour view camera from Hick Vision. I think a really, really decent unit. We install tons of these throughout the year, and I think it's because there's a fine balance with these between the price, it being a sub 80 quid camera, and getting full color images throughout the day and throughout the night. I hope that review was helpful. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help us build this channel. Stick around because next time we're gonna be looking at the 4K version of the Color View camera, the big daddy in this lineup. Catch you next time, guys. Stop that again. Five hundred.